Octavian Ruttel was an active, friendly person. He liked people, and it was important to him that people liked him. For example, there were three children who lived in the house next to his. Octavian thought that he should know their names, their birthdays, and their favorite toys. But he only knew that their parents lived in India, and that they lived with their aunt and uncle. Occasionally, Octavian saw that the three children were looking down from the wall that divided the two properties. They never said anything. They just watched carefully everything he did. Octavian was a farmer. He had pigs, chickens, and other animals. One day, Octavian looked in the chicken coop and found some blood and feathers. Some animal had killed one of his chickens. More and more chickens were killed. Octavian looked carefully for the animal that was killing his chickens. One day, he saw a cat walking around the coop. He was sure that the cat was the killer. Unfortunately, the cat belonged to the three children. Octavian went to the children's house and explained his problem to their uncle. The uncle agreed that the cat had to be killed. The children will be upset, but you don't have to tell them. Was the uncle's last word on the matter. The next day, Octavian waited for the cat. When it arrived, he shot at it with his hunting rifle. And missed it. The cat tried desperately to escape. Octavian shot again, and missed it again. Then the cat ran out into a field where there was a large oak tree. It climbed up the tree, and now it was trapped. Octavian walked up to the tree, pointed his rifle at the cat, and shot. This time, he did not miss, and the dead cat fell to the ground. <coughs> Octavian told the gardener to bury it near the oak tree. Octavian felt very bad about killing the cat, but he had to do it. It was killing his chickens. He walked slowly back to his house, and as he walked near the wall, he looked up. And saw that the three children were staring at him. They had seen everything. Now they were looking at Octavian. Their expression showed how much they hated him. I am sorry, but I had to do it," said Octavian sincerely. "Beast," was the answer the three children gave with great intensity. He saw that it was impossible to explain the situation to the children at that moment. He decided to wait a few days before he tried to make peace with them. Two days later, he went to the sweet shop and asked for a large box of chocolates. He didn't want the first two boxes that the shopkeeper showed him. One had a picture of a cat on the cover, and the other had a picture of some chickens. Finally, the shopkeeper brought him a box decorated with flowers. Octavian sent the box to the children, and later received a note saying that they had received the present. The next day, he felt much better when he went to look at his chicken coops and pigsties. He saw that the three children were looking down from the wall, but they were not looking at him. Then Octavian noticed that here and there in the grass were pieces of chocolate and their shiny wrappers. It looked like a greedy child's paradise. The children had thrown his presents back at him. Part two, unbeast. Octavian felt even worse when he found more blood and feathers in the coop. Apparently. The cat was innocent. Some other animal was the real killer.
The cat had probably come near the coop looking for rats. The children learned from the servants that the real killer was not their cat, and one day Octavian found a piece of paper on which was written, "Beast, rats eat at your chickens." Now more than ever, he wished to find some way to make peace with the children. One day. He had an inspiration. His two-year-old daughter Olivia usually spent a couple of hours with him while her nursemaid ate lunch. About the same time, the children appeared on the wall. Octavian walked with Olivia near the wall, and he saw that the children seemed very interested. My Olivia, thought Octavian, will be able to succeed where I have failed. He brought Olivia a large yellow dahlia. Then he looked up at the children on the wall, and asked, "Do you like flowers?" They nodded their heads solemnly. "Which do you like best?" he asked. "Those with all the colours over there," answered the children, pointing to a group of sweet peas at the other end of the garden. Octavian ran happily to get the flowers for the children. He pulled up lots and lots of flowers of all different colours, and then he returned to the wall to give them to the children. But there was no one on the wall. The children had gone, and what is more, Olivia had gone too. Down in the meadow, the three children were pushing a go cart very fast towards the pigsties. It was Olivia's go cart, and she was on it. Octavian stared for a moment at the rapidly moving group, and then started to run after them. When he arrived at the pigsties, he saw the children climbing on the roof with Olivia. They were old buildings and could not support Octavian's weight. What are you going to do with her? He shouted. It was obvious from the expression on their faces that they were going to do something bad. We're going to cook her over a fire. Said one of the boys, who had obviously read English history. Throw her down, and the pigs will eat all of her except the palms of her hands. Said the other boy, who had obviously read biblical history. The last proposal alarmed Octavian the most. He had heard of cases where pigs had eaten small children. You wouldn't do such a horrible thing to my little Olivia! He shouted. You killed our little cat," replied the children. "I'm very sorry that I did," said Octavian. "We will be very sorry when we kill Olivia," said the girl. "But we can't be sorry until we have killed her." Before Octavian could think of an answer to this child logic, he saw Olivia fall from the roof into the muck below. He went quickly over the wall of the pigsty to rescue his daughter, but found himself trapped in the muck. He could hardly move. At first, Olivia was almost happy to be in the slippery muck. <laughs> but when she began to sink, she realized that she was not at all happy, and she began to cry. Octavian battled with the muck, but he could not move. I can't reach her in time! He shouted. She'll die in the muck. Won't you help her? No one helped our cat. The children reminded him. I'll do anything to show you that I am really and truly sorry. Cried Octavian. Will you stand wearing only your white shirt by the cat's grave? Yes! Screamed Octavian. Holding a candle? Asked one of the boys. And saying, "I'm a miserable beast." Asked the girl. Yes, yes! Answered Octavian. For a long, long time? Asked the girl. For half an hour? Said Octavian anxiously. He had read that a German king had done penance by standing outside in only his shirt 
for five days and five nights at Christmas time. Fortunately, the children had not read any German history, and half an hour seemed like enough time to them. They threw down a ladder, and Octavian was able to save Olivia. That evening, he went to the oak tree where the cat was buried. He was wearing only a shirt. In one hand, he had a candle, and in the other hand, he had a watch. He stood there for half an hour, saying, "I'm a miserable beast. I'm a miserable beast. I'm a miserable beast." He was sure that the three children were watching him. The next morning, Octavian was very happy when he found a piece of paper next to the wall, on which was written the message, "Unbeast."